BioBalance HealthCast, episode 245, Genetic Diet and Health Guidelines for People with Type AB Blood. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. This week, Kathy and I are going to be talking about the final blood type. We've been spending several of our recent podcasts talking about various blood types in terms of being uh, biomarkers that can give you st- statistical predictions of the things that you ought to do to have a healthier life, a happier life, and things you ought to avoid to avoid having an unhealthier life, uh, and and what blood type can tell us about those things. And so we've talked about blood types O and A and B and AB uh, is the one that's left. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to talk about type AB. And we want to cover lifestyle uh, methods that ABs need to be aware of. And if they manage to practice living these lifestyles, produces better results for them statistically, not necessarily for you specifically, you know, you may have a hangnail and some other AB may not have one. This is not to be used that way, but it's to give you a global uh, picture of things that generally or, or on average work to improve your quality of life. So we're going to talk about lifestyle methods. We're going to talk about beneficial foods, the kinds of things that you ought to be eating if you're an AB, the kind of foods that you ought to avoid if you're an AB, and uh, supplements that you should be taking that will benefit your uh, diet and exercise regimen. And then we also will talk about some of the negatives, the the illnesses that you're more likely to experience uh, statistically if you're type AB. So let's start by telling them what AB is. Why is AB one of the types that we need to talk about? Well, it is the last and only other type of, of blood <laughs> type that list. we have. And we're working we're working from the research of Dr. Dadamo mm-hmm. and his father. Mm-hmm. So it's two generations of research and it is really very cutting edge because now everything that I read in the Endocrine Journal mm-hmm. is based on genetics. I mean it's like, well, if we know this gene, then we know what your architectural plan is. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean that that's going to happen to you or that it just means you're at risk for that because after we have genes then we have developmental influences even before we're born then we have also influences of our environment good and bad Mm -hmm. influences of our lifestyle things that we make choices on Mm -hmm. influences like did our parents smoke did we smoke did Mm -hmm. you know things that we choose bad habits even the the geographical area you live in like we live in uh, an iodine sink Right in the Midwest, mm-hmm. because there's not iodine in the food that we grow. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that affects what happens to you, whatever your blood type is. That's right, and so that is something that um, changes how the architectural plan looks. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's genotype versus phenotype. Genotype is your architectural plan. Phenotype is what you look like and what you express. So by by doing the blood types and doing A B. We are looking at a a genetic marker. It's a cheap way to do genetics Mm -hmm. of certain things, not everything. It's just on on the chromosome, there is a genetic area where your blood type is and several other metabolic things are controlled from there. Now, ABs have, are only a thousand years old. They've only been around in the human stream for a thousand years. Right. And they're only two to five percent of the population. Okay. That's not very many. However, my mother was one, is was one. Oh, your She's nurses. deceased. All my nurses are ABs. That's amazing. My son in law is an AB. Yeah. Who knew? I mean, that's a lot of people in my life. So maybe there's ABs. sort of a magnetic resonance that allows them to identify each other. Maybe. And cluster. And cluster together. Yeah, could be. So uh, so it's it's a very interesting blood type for me because I'm surrounded. Mm-hmm. I mean, even though my blood type's B, the ABs are very important to me. Well, like in our last podcast, we were talking about type O. And one of the things you said about type O is they're the universal donor in terms of blood transfusions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Their blood doesn't contain the antigen markers that are similar to certain diseases mm-hmm. so that they don't develop those diseases. They also readily. don't have a reaction. They don't have a reaction. Um, and if you give it to an A, 
A doesn't have antibodies because there's nothing on the outside of the red cell of an O mm-hmm. that would trigger those antibodies. And same with B. Bs don't have a reaction and neither do ABs. So, so ABs are the universal recipient. Receiver. Receiver. Yeah, so they can take blood from anybody. Unless they have a, like, RH, and, RH negative and positive mm-hmm. play in there, but still. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they can take, uh, for the blood type, not the RH factor, they can receive any type of blood and be okay mm-hmm. and not have a reaction to it. Wow. So um, so that's, that's one of the things that's... Um, a benefit of being an AB, mm-hmm. but some of the uh, the other ways uh, or the other blood types came up from um, a Darwinian kind of evolutionary like you call shift. evolutionary shift. Yeah. So, if your uh, environment changed and it was better for A's than O's, then more A's survive. Well, and when we, when we say that, we're talking about generational shifts, things like the shift from being hunter-gatherers early in mankind's history to being agrarian economies yeah, later in mankind's history. Yeah, being farmers. History. Exactly. So, so the, the food supply, the danger risk, the mobility requirements, those things changed in the way that we had to live. And as a result of those changes, new blood types appeared among us that were more adapted to those newer environments. And, and then if that blood type worked for that environment, then there were more babies born and survived with that with blood that. type. Mm-hmm. So that's how the A's and the B's happened. Mm-hmm. Now, they the belief is now that A's happen not from that type of adjustment, like survival of the fittest, but by commingling of populations. Now we don't have so many problems with our environment we've controlled it we're smarter we're we've we've made our environment a little easier but now people from all over the globe get together and then right the and when you were explaining this to me i said oh that's mendelian instead yeah, of darwinian you that's, said, right. that's a gross oversimplification <laughs> but it, it is but still <laughs> it is that's that's but the, it's theory. the concept that we're talking about right. where those those different threads merge because mm-hmm. of our ability now to travel around the world and interact and commingle and raping armies going across continents for mm, centuries. And, yeah, I hate to think yeah. of that. Well, that's true. <laughs> that that does that does cast change. Your seat among them. Yeah, that's it right. does. So not that that's a great thing, but it did happen. <laughs> so we don't have that issue too much anymore. Maybe in some in some third world countries, but well, we're talking about hundreds of years of hundreds patterns. of thousands of yeah. years. So so this for the ABs. Um, they don't, it doesn't mean they're stronger to live in this environment. It just means that they've combined the genes of other envir- of other blood types together. So. so let's talk about their lifestyle. Uh, one of the things we want to talk about, lifestyle methods for health, right. and what the book recommends, what you recommend for ABs, is that they really need to deliberately and consciously create a calming environment for themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, high levels of constant stress are really worse for that blood type than for other blood types. Yeah, that's and right. And so if you know that about yourself, you may find you've incidentally, accidentally already sort of evolved into a lifestyle that's more calm, mm-hmm. or you may need to make some deliberate and direct choices to do that. Things like making, teaching yourself to, to meditate mm-hmm. uh, every couple of days for or an hour. pray yeah. every day, pray. like many of my patients do. Uh, live in a more calming environment, a less uh, less chaotic environment. A less a competitive. Less Competition is a it is negative for AB's uh, type of uh, metabolism. It's not some, like O's, competition is, that's what they thrive so, on. So are we saying that AB's are more mellow or that they just ought to be more mellow? They're, they're more emotional and they have more differences in their their dopamine, their norepinephrine. They have some issues with that if mm. they don't live a lifestyle of calm and having a little time to themselves every day. So all you moms who are AB can use that as an excuse. You need you need an hour in the tub every day to mm-hmm. just chill out. So it's a matter of I would say balance, but bees he describes bees as balance, but this is balanced environment where you have a little time for yourself, you have community. He mm-hmm. he advises community activities so that you can connect with other people and then also where you exercise, perfect exercise, it's kind of like, ooh, this is great. You have one day you have yoga, which is 
usually calming. The next day you have a short like 45 minutes of aerobic activity, the next day calming exercise, the next day aerobic. So it's not, you don't have to go out and run a marathon. You know, and so you, you probably know, should. And you shouldn't. Yeah. It's probably not good good for you. Mm -hmm. Now there's always differences in every, in every single blood type. There's This doesn't mean it has to be you, but this is, this is the global view of what this genetic type so yes. ABs are less successful. They, they tend to get more illnesses and have more problems if they live in a chaotic environment mm -hmm. where there are abrupt changes of lifestyle. Right. So, and, and sometimes that happens to you. I mean, you have no control over yeah. it. You, you have a traffic accident today. But if you structure your life to be as centered and calm and predictable as you can structure mm -hmm. it, then you are less likely to uh, encounter some of these illnesses. Right. It's 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 a better it's a better uh, effect on your physical self mm -hmm. if your environment is friendly to you and this is the friendly environment that you need so if you live in a calm environment you regulate yourself you meditate you exercise appropriately you have time for visualization and prayer or whatever however it is that you do that then let's talk about diet what are the things that you should eat that are beneficial to your your overall health so ABs have both the A and the B type mm -hmm. within them, but they're less able to eat red meat because they have low alkaline phosphatase. That's a an enzyme from the liver that is that is secreted into your intestines to help you eat meat. So you can eat meat. I'm saying you, meaning ABs. ABs can eat meat but not red meat as much unless it's really well cooked and broken down. So you have to break down the tissue so that you can actually actually get something out of it and have it not make you sick. But other types of meat you should eat. Chicken and lots of fish and other domesticated animals. The book says you should eat escargot. Yeah, that's right. Escargot is your friend. It helps you with some other enzymes. So for the things that you don't make as much of, just like A's don't make as much of alkphosphatase as the other two blood types, mm -hmm. O and B, though that means that you should limit red meat and Im increase all the other types of meat and fish well, for your we, protein. We, we're talking about some of the other blood types that they should restrict their dairy consumption. Mm -hmm. And ABs actually ought to have dairy yes. three to six times a week, whether if, that's cheese or yogurt or uh, milk products. Mm -hmm. uh, and eggs. Eggs are, is a perfect mm -hmm. protein for you. So even now, if you're lactose intolerant, that's a whole different issue. So you could take mm -hmm. lactate and still have the milk, uh, or I don't drink raw milk, but I drink all other kinds of of uh, dairy products, just like bees are supposed to. So I'm lactose intolerant as well, but I still can have the other can types. Compensate for that, yeah. right? So, um, so eggs are a good, the perfect food, basically. Vegetables. We ve we're talking about meat and protein. Yes, and and milk, dairy. What about vegetables? Well, vegetables are, are, are key to, to ABs because that's that part of the A that they have. Mm -hmm. They need a lot of vegetables, especially, I guess, the best ones that were determined that were beneficial were artichokes. You know those foods that you eat that you feel really good after you eat them? So Ice cream, uh, chocolate. Ugh, that's not what I meant. I meant <laughs> that's a sugar high. I mean like when you eat, like I eat lamb. Oh, I feel great the next day. I mean, if I have lamb for dinner, that is like, that's my perfect meat. I go to uh, a restaurant. That sort of specializes in lamb. An Italian restaurant. Yeah. That specializes in lamb. And I n have never had anything else there. I mean, it is the most amazing lamb. And I feel so good the next day. Uh -huh. it, it's just like that. If I could eat it every day, it would probably be ideal for me. Although variety is very important. But... Vegetables are very important to A's and a moderate amount of vegetables for B's. So A's need vegetables. So, so lamb with onions and artichokes and would be, some dairy, maybe some eggs and some yogurt would be a perfect meal for you. Right. And then with that, you well, should no, drink for, for green a, tea. That would be perfect for A's. For A's. No, right. For A's. A's. And, and with that, they should drink green tea. That's right. And, and, and that's not the, caffeine. And not caffeine and, and not alcohol, actually. Right. Alcohol and caffeine um, are not beneficial to ABs. Yeah. So that's where they, 
that's the rub. <laughs> so so we're, we're giving you some of this information. The book itself is called Live Right for Your Type by Dr. Peter J. Dadamo. And you'll find more uh, comprehensive explanations of these things in the book if you if you want to go and get it. Uh, he has two books out about blood types and the way to impact your lifestyle by following his mm -hmm. guidelines. Uh, so those are beneficial foods, foods that you should avoid, and you started this already. Started this alcohol and caffeine. Alcohol, yeah, tough. Um, protein, um, excuse me, red meat, and you should eat other proteins rather than red meat. Mm -hmm. um, you shouldn't skip meals. You should always eat um, seeds, nuts, something, fruit, vegetables in between. Um, and your biggest meal should be breakfast. But the foods that you, that you shouldn't eat, like A's should have their biggest meal at breakfast, uh -huh. and A-B's should as well. Okay. So, and then decrease the amount of food throughout the day. But the, there's, a, there's a substance called lectin, which causes you to slow your metabolism for every blood type. And for A-B's, the lectin producers, believe it or not, are... I misspoke earlier, chicken, certain white fish, corn, buckwheat, lima beans, and kidney beans. So that should be off your list. Yeah. But they can eat tomatoes. I can't eat. I'm not supposed to eat tomatoes, and I love them. So that's an issue, you know. But but those are things that if you can keep those in your mind and not eat those, that will speed your metabolism up. And everybody's trying to get to the ideal weight. Mm -hmm. So this is an easy way. If you can not do this, then you can eat more easily get to your ideal weight. So in the United States, it is difficult for most people to produce their own food and balance yeah. their diet through what they grow and consume in an organic way and know what they're getting. So we get a lot of mass-produced food that are just enriched with preservatives, canned goods, frozen goods, whatever, that have been fixed or, or partially fixed. And that's what we have to eat. And so as a result of that, what we're finding is that more and more people need more and more supplements to their diet mm -hmm. to to offset some of that mass production, you know, like how much corn syrup is in whatever you're eating or drinking. Right. That uh, you don't even know is in that there. That you don't even know is in there. And, and so you have sugar problems and diabetes problems and so on. So we need to talk briefly about supplements. Can you highlight mm -hmm. a few supplements that ABs should be thinking about taking? Well, the, the biggest... The biggest vitamin, if you did nothing else, you should take a multiple B vitamin or a multi B mm -hmm. because that's a, that helps stress. And stress is a big issue for ABs. For ABs, right. So that calms stress. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one and the most basic. Then alpha lipoic acid is another, and that helps with uh, blood sugar, and it also helps with, um, with energy and, and, and calming your energy. Mm-hmm and uh, some of the emotional issues. Now there's a couple herbs that I'm not really familiar with, but I will be getting more familiar with. Rhodiola rosea uh, is one of them. And they and Dr. Dodamo feels that that is essential for ABs. And that what that does basically is it, it covers a multitude of sins in your eating. Okay. Okay. So that's going to, if you eat improperly for a day, that you know that'll take over and, and help you. And he actually has some of these supplements all put together per blood type. Yes. On online. So, mm -hmm. um, L tyrosine is an amino acid, and so is citrulline. Mm -hmm. Those are two amino acids, meaning amino acids are parts of proteins that we don't usually get enough of. So L tyrosine and citrulline are two amino acids that would be helpful for ABs. Then dash and root, which is another herb, sang uh, san it sounds like a drink. Sangra del gra de grotto. You can get that on Amazon, actually, hmm. believe it or not. And that is uh, an herb. Glutamine is a, is a uh, I hate to do lists. We'll just have to put these up. But uh, glutamine is an amino acid that's very, very important because it, may, it helps make GABA. You know, which is right. one one of the um, neurotransmitters that that actually keeps us going, keeps us happy, and actually calms us down. Keeps so us from a being lot depressed. of these that you're mentioning are basically amino acid compounds. Yes. Yeah. So just parts of proteins, but we don't get all of these in a in a isolated amount yeah. in in the mass-produced diet. So yeah. 
you know, most of the time we do need supplements. I kind of take a handful every morning, I confess, mm -hmm. because I know that I don't eat right every day. It's not or, that or I that eat the can't. wrong thing. I mean, it's that I don't eat enough of the right things. Right. So, and that's something that, you Which know. Which is pretty common. People, it's very common. Yeah. And sadly, in our diet and our lifestyle is more common than it is in Europe. So, so before we run out of time, let's highlight for uh, a minute some of the medical illnesses that are ABs more common experiences that mm -hmm. ABs are more likely to encounter. And again, as a statistical pattern among ABs, not necessarily predictive that you are going to get one of these. They, um, they kind of have the bad news from both A's and B's. Mm -hmm. And that the basis of that is so that people understand why this is ABs have the protein on the red cell of A and B. So when it sees bacteria, which have the A protein, or viruses, which have the B protein, it doesn't fight them off very well. So the, your immune system is diminished and less effective than all the other blood types combined. Wow. So, so basically, you have a problem with immunity. You're going to have to bump your immunity as much as possible, which means eating right, exercising, decreasing stress, and taking supplements. So you have to concentrate on keeping your immunity up. Mm -hmm. You have to take that. You still have to take the same things like um, the you want to you want to protect yourself from viruses. So you want to get the flu flu vaccine, definitely, because you'll be at risk for that. Uh, other issues are heart disease, high cholesterol, high blood pressure. Those are all issues of ABs that you have to be um, cognizant of and try to take medicine for, so you don't have a stroke or you don't have a heart attack. Mm -hmm. um, the celiac disease is a disease of um, being unable to tolerate wheat, right? And it's a very common thing Eat in the ABs. Gluten -free. Well, and it's increasing. The number of celiac diagnoses has just skyrocketed in the last ten years. Because we have a test for it now. Yeah. Because we didn't have a test so for it know, before. They, they had so, heart attacks and died, but yeah, didn't know why. That's yeah. right. And they they were nauseated when they ate bread, and they didn't know why, or they had right. diarrhea, or we called it irritable bowel. Well, now we know what it is. Okay. So. Um, also, this is big, you have hypercoagulable blood, and there's a higher risk of pulmonary emboli and thromboses, like mm -hmm. deep venous thrombosis. Now, having said that, this is a, a gross overview, but I, I have patients who have told me, oh, I've had a blood clot. Well, I'm not sure if they're going to get another one. I don't, you know, I don't want to give them estrogen if they're going to get another one. So I do a series of very specific seven tests that we know of that are genetic that and that will tell me whether they're going to get another blood clot or not. And if they aren't at risk, then I can give them estrogen because it was just it was just a, basically a mistake, yeah. something that just happened. And they're at the same risk as anybody else. Estrogen doesn't make it any worse. Okay. So so, so again, let let's close this out by summarizing. Mm -hmm. We are talking about, and this is the, the end of a series of conversations about blood types as biological markers. The data that supports what we've been talking about is in a book by Dr. Peter J. Dadamo uh, called Live Right for Your Type, mm -hmm. uh, where he outlines his research and his mm -hmm. conclusions. What we're trying to present to you is information about global lifestyle concerns or awarenesses that if you follow, you decrease your risk factors and increase your positive survival factors for getting through life with less complications and less illnesses than you otherwise might. So hopefully you will use this information as a spur or a trigger to pursue more data mm -hmm. and, and to continually move yourself as an informed consumer in the right direction for quality of life uh, that you have left. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.